Our next methodology is called the silent way and it's accredited to Caleb Gateno. This particular methodology moved on from the behaviorist stimulus response to what's called a theory of constructivism. And this constructivist approach was very, very different, very radical to anything that had been tried before. The background to this particular methodology was that there was a mathematics teacher who found that his students were finding it very difficult to understand particular concepts. What he realized was that what they needed was a more visual representation of the information. So he came up with a series of colored rods to help with those concepts in mathematics. He gave his name to those rods and they're called Cusanair rods. And there's an example of Cusanair rods here. What teachers of English realized was that if this constructivist idea of using this visual representation worked for concepts in mathematics, why could it not be applied to the teaching of English? And this is what the silent way and Cateno came up with. The idea is that each of these colors would represent a different sound, a phoneme, if you like. And by using those colors, he could teach vocabulary and indeed grammar, one particular color may represent one particular sound and by putting those colors out in a series he could represent the linking of those sounds into a particular word. So if you were quite inventive and you were trained in this particular method you could use this series to develop the pronunciation of words move on to the next level, into the way in which sentences are actually constructed, and so on and so forth. So, what was good about this particular methodology was that it was said to use cognition in the learning process. In other words, the brain was actually physically involved in constructing the language and how it works. So we're really building up the language within our own brain. This constructivist idea is very much the same way that we learn our native language. The other positive thing about it is that it's good fun. One of the main problems with this particular methodology is that it uses all of these charts and so on and so forth, so it takes quite a lot of learning. You have to know what each of these particular colors mean and all of the charts and so on and so forth. And that's true both for the teacher and for the students themselves. The whole point of the silent way is that the teacher would say as little as possible apart from the modeling of language initially and one of the main criticisms was that it was felt that this particular methodology was so far removed from didactic teaching, the teacher standing at the front and explaining, that students found it very difficult to